Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolades at Dawn. I remain your host, Chad of Fury333, and this next match is going to be between Hokomoko and Felthos on Tartarus. Hokomoko going for Spiderbot Factory, which is a very good choice in this map. And. No, sorry, Felthos going for Spiderbot Factory. Hokomoko going for Amphib. I was wondering, wait a sec, that's not right. Hokomoko always goes for Amphib. Given half a chance, they will play Amphib. And they are playing Amphib, that is exactly right. So, Hokomoko with Amphib. Amphib versus Spider in this map. Oy. I mean, Spider has the clear advantage just by being able to get to these five, well, ten metal. They get an extra ten metal for free, unless their opponent is playing gunships or starts terraforming around a lot. But otherwise, it's just build up here, take the hill. Now, Hokomoko did go for a recon commander. That will allow them to get, and Feltos did not, so Feltos can only go up with spiders. But Hokomoko could actually send their commander down to one of these sides and just set up. We've seen this before, actually, I think. Not, not sure if it's Hokomoko that did it, but yeah, we've seen this setup before where, you know, it's not... I, I think it was light vehicles last time. But yeah, it's not the factory that gets up there, it's the commander. The factory is just for controlling the low ground, and the commander is for actually taking the economy. And it's kind of tricky because, I mean, obviously the clear strategy is there. You want to have your commander dealing with the economy. Sorry, not the economy. You'll, the commander deals with the economy, yeah, because that's what the commander is really good at. Whereas you have a better army for dealing with the ground. Spiders, on the other hand, they're not terrible in this map. They actually work fairly well. And this map does have enough hills for ambushes and that sort of thing. Like, this center crater is really good for that. There's all these little hills around here. And then, of course, there is the fact that you can use the northwest and southeast as staging points. But it is still kind of tricky. It is still one of those things where you got to make sure that the low ground isn't being lost while the high ground is being taken. And as we can see, Hokomoko already with a duck both here to stop... Well, actually, Felthos already realizing what's going on. So they aren't going to go in just naked with workers, but there's already a duck just trying to make sure nothing can come in. I don't think that's got enough vision range, though. I think that's... Yeah, no, if... If Felthos were to send in a welder down... Or, was it? Yeah. So a weaver. Welders, heavy tanks. If they were to send a weaver down here right at the edge of the map, they'd actually avoid the duck. But I don't know if they're going to do that. Looks like Felthos is a bit more concerned about making sure that Hokomoko can't get in the way than making sure they actually take the high ground early. Which kind of makes sense. It's not a terrible idea. Anyway, Hokomoko just expanding out the way you'd normally expect for a factory. Just kind of in rows. Setting up no wind gen, surprisingly. I mean, here would be a really good place to set up wind generators. Over here is really risky, but in the back, by your base? No, that's not very risky at all. Neither player doing that, though. And another duck stunned out to its death. So, do Venom Redback. It looks like that's the thing to go for, is double Venom Redback. Or two to one ratio of Venoms to Redbacks. I mean, I can kind of see that. Venoms are a touch frailer. And also, you need more of them, because you need the stun. If you have Redback without Venom, the Redbacks die. If you have Venom without Redback... The Venoms can at least hold the opponents in place until the Redbacks come, until reinforcements arrive. Or they just kill the thing with their own lightning shot. Either way. And now Felthos has a free shot to get to the northeast or southeast. Not in the northwest, though. The northwest, they can if they'd like, but they aren't going for it yet. They do have a Weaver. They could go for it whenever they want to. But they're not worried about it. Hokomoko, however, should point out they are much healthier energy-wise. So their army's getting a little bit larger as a result. Like, Felthos, they're not excessing metal, but they aren't spending it as efficiently as they could either. Should be fixed up pretty soon, though. This solar collector about to get built up. What is... Okay, the factory's not changed... The factory's low priority. It's got to be low priority. For some reason, it's not showing me priority on the factory, but yeah. I'm guessing both factories are... Oh, no, I know what it is. The construction's a high priority. That's, that's what it is. Interesting. It's not the way I'd normally do it. Normally, I would have the factory at low priority so that all the constructors go first. You don't have to set them manually to high priority. But it looks like, nope, that's the way that both players are going. Set the constructors to high priority and don't worry about anything else. Okay, cool. That's not something I've ever really experimented with. But it looks like Hokomoko will have ducks taking the north, at least block in the northwest. What is Felthos' radar coverage? Oh, okay, they got, they have knowledge. They know what's going on. What about Hokomoko? What do they know? They know just about everything up to what's going up to the north, to the southeast, to the upside there. And they probably still kind of know what's going on there, too. 
like just by inference. But that's the one spot they're missing, and that is actually where Felthos is set up. So Hokumoko probably already knows that Felthos sent something over to the southeast. Definitely knows about the northwest, and the northwest getting hit hard. Hokumoko is taking a lot of damage there. Felthos should be able to get in. I mean, as soon as they want, really. Get a Weaver over to the north to the northwest side. Take that. Take all that. Get the economic advantage as a result. Because right now, Felthos has actually kind of sacrificed the map. Like, they aren't really taking their ground side of the map. They're taking the high side. They're taking these plateaus. But Hokumoko has taken the ground, and they've taken about the same amount of metal. I mean, yeah, once we get to the point where the players have just about captured the entire map, yes, then Felthos will have the advantage. But right now, Felthos could also have the advantage. But they're not building up a lot of metal. Getting up some caretakers. And they have energy. They're pretty healthy for energy right now. They really need more metal. Thankfully for them, Hokumoko is about the same, and Hokumoko is accessing a little bit, too. Also is not producing as much. Felthos, however, with the caretaker of the factory, that will help. That will help produce a lot. So their army should start to outpace, Hok outpace Hokumoko is pretty quick. And now we see, there we go, now they're taking advantage of their increased territory. But then, then again, Hokumoko also creeping in on the southeast side. Really trying to make sure that Felthos can't just take that for free. Now what I want to know is, is this conch going to start terraforming this ramp to... I mean, they won't be able to get into this higher area, but... Are they going to try? And at the same time, are these weavers going to actually go and take... Because, I mean, they could probably take this. Oh, whoops. Hmm... Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what Hokumoko's trying to do. Set up some defenders, at least. Try to take out the defenders that are already there. But they might need to terraform, and that's actually going to be really risky if they do. Like, really amazingly risky. That's probably suicide, honestly. Now, Feldhaus moving in again. Hokumoko's army hasn't grown a huge amount, but it has still grown. And Feldhaus' army, on the other hand... Not really growing. They're focused far more on turning their money into more money. Focused far less on turning it into territory control, which could be a problem. I mean, also into defenses, but yeah, that's still not much. Fine against single targets, but unfortunately, Hokomoko bypassing Feldas' forces, and the ducks are considerably faster. I mean, 84 elmos per second compared... Actually, not considerably. They're actually about the same speed, but still. The angle is horrible. This, this hero venom, that's all that's here. That's all there is to defend everything here, and it's actually working out! The Hero of Venom saves the day, allowing reinforcements to get in and stopping these ducks in their tracks. And nothing going on over there, so continue on, see what's going on here. I mean, these ducks are all dead, so not much to really look at, other than Duck Graveyard. As I'm sure Felthos believes it to be the best way to go. Like, as it should be, the ducks are dying horribly. But where... Okay, there's the Weaver. I agree with the Caretaker, but on the other hand... Okay, good. There's a Weaver up. Never mind. There's a Weaver further north. So it's all good. The Weaver can take the northwest, and it looks like it has no plans to. That's, in fact, Hokomoko's own conch. Of course, conches can't go up there, but still. Hmm. So yeah, Felthos really reluctant to take metal extractors they're not sure they can hold. Like, they're not taking these center metal extractors. They aren't taking the metal extractor right here, which is out of range. These defenders can't actually hit it. It's very close to in range, but it's still out of range. And the rest of these forces, they could probably move in to deal some damage. But it looks like both players are so focused on building with the defenders... They aren't really paying attention to the armies. Just setting them up, keeping a no-man's land going, getting their economies up. But they're still neck and neck. Hokomoko hasn't really lost a lot for not having the north, the northwest and southeast plateaus. And Feldhaus hasn't really pushed too hard in taking the plateaus as much as possible. Nor have they taken the ground much. That's the thing. Hokomoko has evened it out by taking the ground. Feldhaus, they have safer expansions, but they don't have more expansions. And they could just... Get this here. Like, I don't know why they're not taking these two metal extractors right here. That baffles me. 
I can see why they're not taking this one. That's impossible. That's not going to hold at all. The defenders are right there. But this one's out of range of everything. And Hoke only Thaldos can go over the center crater. Hokomoko can't do that. I mean, okay, with gunships they can, but not until they get gunships. There's no point not getting money you could have gotten because your opponent might deal with it. When your opponent right now cannot deal with it. At any rate, we do have gunships up. We do have a brawler up. That brawler not doing much right now. But I'm guessing it's going to be used to try to break down all these defenders. At the same time, Crab coming in to try to break the defenders over in Hokomoko's side. And Feldos pushing in. There we go. Taking the Northwest. Taking the lower Northwest Plateau as well. And the Crab to get rid of the defenders. Finally breaking this open. This will... Yeah, I was going to say, this will provoke the Brawlers. The Brawlers are going to come now. Because they have to. And this is going to be painful for those ducks. I mean, nice recluse softening. I like this army. Like, against ducks, this is a really good army. Against the boys, not really so sure. The boys are kind of weird that way. They're a bit hard to get to. The recluses should be fine. But tarantulas would be really handy. And that's exactly what's being built up. So fail toss on point with that. And the more important thing, they got rid of the defenders. That's much more important. Like, they broke open the stalemate on the eastern side of the map. Now, unfortunately, this is a really hard choice for Feltos. They're kind of... They're keeping their army all in one. I don't I really agree with that. They have enough of an army. They could split it in half. Use some of them to deal with the boys. Mostly take the Venoms and Redbacks to deal with the Ducks. Keep this... Okay, they are doing exactly that. Yeah, good. They are splitting, so they aren't going to let the boys come in for free. That's a rookie mistake that I know Feltos is not going to make. And I was... Thinking, okay, Phil is not going to make that rookie mistake, right? They're not going to keep all their army together against their opponent's split army. And no, they're not. No. Phil Dots knows what's up. But yeah, that's a common thing. If, if you're ever in a situation where you're getting attacked on two fronts, defend on both fronts. Like, unless you know that one of the attacks is so weak your static defenses can take care of it, don't move your army around. It's a really easy way to get your for your opponent to just break open. And this is actually what Hokumoku's trying to do from the looks of it. They're trying to basically force Feltos to react and keep repositioning their units. And Feltos, to their credit, is doing a pretty good job doing that. I mean, also, it helps the Recluses are basically just raining death on everything. And also Feltos with the radar covers. They know what's going on a bit in advance. But yeah, the Recluses... There are enough Recluses that despite their accuracy issues, which honestly are not that great. Really, If you look at it, they're not that inaccurate. But especially when you have half a dozen of them, who cares? They're accurate enough at that point. It's more than enough to wipe out a group of ducks. Or a group of boys or anything, really. Like, there's more than enough firepower coming in that the group is going to be torn to shreds. Although the boys are a bit harder, but man, those cliffs. Unfortunately, not good enough, but still. Cliffs for ambushes are awesome, but are we going to see Hokomoko switch over to the other side? One more gun no more gunships, really. We're seeing a grizzly. That's not surprising, but no gunships. They had the two brawlers, and that was it. I mean, oh yeah, never mind. There's five tarantulas. That makes a lot of sense, then. Although, it looks like... Oh, these boys are going to be able to go around the opposite side. Boys are not what you want to have at your back. Although, on the other hand, Failthouse is able to do a lot of damage here. I mean, they should be able to push Okamoko pretty far in. But it looks like Hokomoko is going to try attacking from the eastern front again. And there are no defenders for Feltos. There is one defender, that's about it. A couple Lotuses and the Crab. So that's good. But the Crab taking care of the defenders. And now at this point, is Feltos going to move forward? They are expanding more. Feltos has taken more of the metal. But still not taking a lot of the ground metal extractors. But at this point, they will probably take these metal extractors here and here. Because those are in Feltos' territory now. Feltos has claimed that territory for themselves. And Okamoka right now continuing with the ducks. I don't know why they're continuing with ducks. I mean, the Grizzly will be helpful. But this is pretty much the duck counter army. Yeah, the boys are distracting it, sure. But this is the duck counter army. The recluses, the half dozen recluses being part of that. Actually, a pretty integral part of that, too. Just given that it's now a group of ducks. But at any rate, Crab needs to move forward, possibly help get rid of this Grizzly. 
Because Crab with armor has more health than a Grizzly, and the Grizzly's probably slow enough that it won't matter too much. Aye. Oh, yeah. Still, that's tough to deal with. Beldas not wanting to engage directly. Instead, opting to go around this... Well, possibly regroup. Just get away from the Grizzly. Ceding the territory to Hokomoko. And this is a bit of a problem, because now these ducks are going to come over this hill. And Feldos needs to prepare for that. They have no defenses over there. They need to prepare for the duck attack over the hill. And there'll probably be one over the hill and one down on the land side. Or the flat side. Would be my guess. And no additional attack over the east. This is the reason why you would build a lot of ducks, though. Is because you just attack from multiple fronts and force your opponent to be everywhere where they can't be. Although, this is clearly the biggest... Like, the Grizzly is obviously one big piece of muscle. Got to, they have to deal with the Grizzly first. That's a lot of power, but probably what will happen is as the Grizzly engages, that's when the Ducks will move. But it looks like, no, they're being forced because the Recluse is not going to let that happen. Okamoko, they are pretty much forced to attack. The boys going into attack. No defenses inside the base, and nice infiltrator on the Grizzly. So... Ducks being torn apart by the Rexes on retreat, while Grizzly and Ducks over the eastern side being torn apart by the Venom and Redback. This is working out beautifully for Feltos. That was a very nice setup of Recluse really ripping apart those Ducks, and the Grizzly won't have a chance. Very nice infiltrator there, and the commander down to... Wow, that worked out beautifully. Very nice turnaround. It looked like Hogamoko was going to make Feltos' life difficult, but of course, infiltrators are a thing the Spiderbot Factory has. Very beautiful use of that. Very nice come comeback. Well, not only come back, but very nice push. So it was a bit stalemate for a little while. But that was the push to push it. That was the thing to do. Very smart move there by Felthos. In unit value, overall, yeah, Felthos really got a larger and larger army because Hokumoko was attacking from all sides with ducks. But like I said, Felthos had the counter army. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised that Hokumoko didn't... I don't know what they could have gone for, really. Yeah, with Amphib, it's kind of hard. I mean, they had gunships, but the problem with Tarantulas, and, okay, I suppose you could have gone for maybe a Black Don, although that would have been pretty expensive. Maybe, but that still would have been super risky. I mean, if they'd gone air, Napalm Bombers would have been a beautiful thing to use against this. Like, Napalm Bombers would have wrecked this force, no problem. Like, Phoenixes? But that still would have been suicide runs, but it would have been cheaper suicide runs to deal a lot more damage. Gunships, though, I don't know. Not really a lot of good options. Not for this force. Not to counter that force. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, so fail thoughts really, it just came down to... They were really efficient with their... Like, really efficient with their army. They lost 42 units that entire game. And their units were about the same value as fail, as Hokomoko's. It's just... Fail thoughts is really conservative about using them. Anyway. That was that. Very interesting. A lot of very even economy, though. Like, the economy was not too far off, but yeah, using the losing those units was not helpful for Hokomoko. Like, they're, as you can see, the unit value kind of stagnated around 10,000 or so, whereas Failthos steadily rose. Like, a couple dips here and there, but it steadily rose. So, anyway, next game is going to be, and it's also the last game for tonight, it's going to be Vestrichium versus Hokomoko on Ravaged. I haven't seen Vestrichium in a long time. I can't remember the last time they played, actually. They've apparently been on break. I haven't seen them in a while. Either that, or they've been playing a lot of team games. It's kind of curious, but it looks like they have actually been playing a fair amount in the last little while. Yeah, they've been playing a lot in the last couple days, and before that was months ago. Ten months ago, until they started playing again three days ago. And this appears to be one of the... This one of the earlier games? Yeah, this is one of the earlier games when they came back. So... They might be a bit rusty here. But we'll see how it goes. Kind of curious, because it's always nice to see people return. It's always nice to see old faces again. So let's just watch that. So that'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 